everybody, Richard again here from Electric Classic Cars and today's episode is all going to be about a workshop update. It's been a while since we've done one so it's about time we showed you what new toys we've got in the workshop and some of them that have already gone. So on the last one I showed you this uh, lovely VW T3 Synchro. Uh, I haven't started it at all really um, so we've got our teeth into it now so I'll show you kind of um, an update of uh, a car kind of midway through the conversion. So what have we done? We've done the battery boxes. So fabrication guys have been very busy. Um, so we got um, a battery box here, a battery box behind the back seat, um, or underneath the back seat, should I say, and another one where the stool goes. There's normally another like um, uh, stool behind the passenger seat. Um, now on this, we are looking for maximum range and we're going to be keeping the four-wheel drive capability of the vehicle. So we're going with a complete Tesla P100 battery pack, and it's still going to be used as a camper. So you're still going to have a rock and roll bed, and you're still going to have the same seating um, uh, it, uh, within it. So we've got three Tesla batteries there, and if you come around here, you'll see another battery box there. So I'm not sure how many batteries goes in that. I'm going to be guessing maybe four, maybe five Tesla batteries in that. And that sits there. So you see, can see the guys actually have uh, cut out some of the wood in the floor there. That space there is where that box goes. And the reason why it's got a little bit of a, a lip around it is because that's where the, the sponge for the actual seat goes. So that's going to be there. And the rest of it is in here. So we've got another two batteries, or battery packs in there. So we've got essentially Underneath uh, the uh, rock and roll bed stroke seat is uh, another battery pack, uh, pack there and another one there. So in total, um, there are 16 Tesla modules in here making up 100 kilowatt hours. Uh, the other thing we've all, all also done is um, this customer wanted to get rid of um, anything that was um, going to be uh, carbon-based, if you like, as far as uh, uh, fuel and burning is concerned, which meant to get rid of the gas hob. So what we've done is, if you have a look in here, we've put in the electric induction hob on here as well. So this worktop here is all new. So we've got electric fridge, electric induction hobs, and all the battery packs are, uh, should be finished by tomorrow, I think. So it's Thursday night tonight. So that's the bus. Um, lots to get on with. So let's go to the next vehicle. Uh, I'll tell you what, let's cover this. So those that follow the channel regularly will already be up to uh, speed, just about, on the, uh, well, crazy, let's face it, it's just crazy, four-wheel drive Tesla-powered race car that I'm building. So, otherwise known as death on a stick. Um, what have we got in here? So we've got a Tesla motor in the back, there's a Tesla motor up front, um, we've started uh, to make the battery packs here now, so anybody that hasn't like uh, kept up to speed on the, um, uh, the project updates, this you wouldn't have seen yet, so uh, there you go, um, there's your premier um, exclusive uh, here on the race uh, car project. We've got the battery packs roughly sort of like tacked, to uh, tacked together, we've got six um, LG Chem modules going in there, so that's going to be a 400 volt battery pack in there, another one here and another one the other side. So, um, because we're putting them in parallel, they're all gonna be sharing the load, which is needed really, because you know that motor alone can pull around about 1200 amps. And then we've got another one in the front, a small Tesla drive unit in the front. And as with any racing, it's full throttle, then on the brakes, full throttle on the brakes, so the amp draw out of these batteries is gonna be massive. Um, and don't forget, when you're on the brakes on an electric uh, race car, that doesn't give the batteries any, you know, break because essentially then you've got regenerative braking going on as well. So you, you've got the amps going back in the batteries. So it's a good idea to have them, you know, paralleled up to be able to share the load. So it, um, I don't want to dwell on this because we've got an um, ongoing series on our YouTube channel updating the project as we go. So I'm not going to deep dive on this. So that's enough for now. Look away, over to the next one. And the next one is the Maserati Ghibli. So, uh, yeah, beautiful car. I mean, I, I prefer these to E-Type Jags. I don't know, you know, why. I just think they're a more beautiful car. I, I really do like the styling on these. So 1967 Maserati Ghibli. Um, what we've done, um, 
and the thing is with these projects is I look in them one day, I think, ah, oh, the motor's in, the battery packs are in, excellent. And I come to it the next day, like today, and go, huh, motor's not in it, uh, battery packs are out. So now there's not much to show, but there was the other day. So what have we done? Um, now, before I go any further, it's um, probably uh, a good point to point out. Um, this and a lot of the conversions we do are completely reversible and there's no cutting or welding onto the body or the chassis. Everything, um, uh, as much as we can um, on the cars, is completely reversible. And this one, especially so. So what we've done on this, we're mounting the motor onto the existing engine mounts. Uh, the motor um, is going onto the gearbox. So the um, uh, adapter plate is already made. And just on the bench um, behind Tim over there is the motor, which was in the other day. And the mounts and everything are all done as well. So the mounting system, the motors, the adapter plates, everything is done. And I think the reason why it's been in and out today is because the guys are just finish, finishing off the um, gearbox uh, uh, cradle. Um, and that's done. Then there's the battery boxes. That's done, but that's over there. And then the rear battery box, which is this one here, uh, this is, um, now how are we doing this? We're using CALB batteries in this. And from memory, there are 25 CALB batteries, 13 in the front, 12 in the back. Oh, no, I lie. It's, if only I could read, it'd be dangerous. <laughs> rear box, 13 CALBs. So there's 13 in the rear box, 12 in the front. So if you picture that there, zoom, on, zoom in on that, Tim, so that people can just picture it. Uh, while I go around the boot, and open up the boot. Now, with that in your mind, that is the home. So essentially, don't forget, we, we can't cut or weld or anything on this car. It's literally got a bolt in, and that box is going to be sitting there. So that will come up to about there and go that way. So it will butt up against that um, member up there. And we've already tested it before anybody says anything. It doesn't fit in this way. We've tried it. So it's got to come in through the actual uh, doors and then over, which is going to be quite fun when the uh, ba uh, batteries are all in the battery pack because that's not going to be light. So do you, do you still keep some boot space? Yeah, so that's a good point. So the battery pack should finish around about there, which means that you've got about that much boot space. So it's going to be a lot smaller boot space, but at least you've still got a boot. But don't forget, there's no back seats in this, even though there are cushions, there's certainly no usable back seats. So there's still going to be quite a big luggage space area um, in front of the battery box. Um, so yeah, battery box in there, another one in the front, and that's the Maserati. Another thing of note, um, this here on a lot of Maserati Ghiblis is just straight across, like that. I've, I've seen a lot of photos of these, that's just straight across, but on this one, it kind of comes down like that. So, uh, yeah, an odd design quirk. Um, I don't know if it was a one year only thing, but yeah, there you go. Maserati Ghibli, beautiful car. <coughs> Wish I had one. Uh, right, next car, uh, a car that I did have. Uh, Tim <coughs> knows very well. Yeah, Porsche 914. Uh, that was your uh, seat there, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, because that's a right hand drive, isn't it? The one we had was a left hand drive, so. Yeah, so Tim was a co-driver and I was the driver in uh, a rally car that we pedalled um, ooh, for about six or seven years in the British Historic Rally Championship. So I know these cars inside out and upside down sometimes. But uh, this is a customer's car, beautifully restored, right-hand drive conversion, so quite rare. And uh, again, uh, you go forward with these conversions and then you go back. And the reason why we do that sometimes is because we quite often, uh, for cars that we're going to do repeats of, make kits. Not so much for Maserati Ghibli, because the chance of doing another 1967 Maserati Ghibli is probably slim. But Porsche 914s, definitely. This is the second or third we've done. And we've got a really, like, nail setup now um, to do the conversions. So on this one, what we've done is we've, we've done the conversion. It's like, like doing a... Um, uh, uh, a dry build, if you like, or, or a dress rehearsal in the play. We've done that. We've made sure everything fits, the whole loom and everything went in, and then we stripped it all back out again because uh, we want to make a kit. And I'll show you what I mean. So 
the, anything orange in uh, cars, for those that don't know, that's the dangerous bit. So that's your high voltage um, uh, in the orange cables. So you've got high voltage cable um, that goes through the uh, car, or high voltage loom that goes through the car, and a 12 volt loom. And what we do is we'll do the conversion and design it all and put it in there, and then uh, make sure it all fits, obviously, and then we'll take it all back out again. And if you come over here, you'll see what we then do. So we make what's called loom boards. Now, a loom board is essentially um, taking the original loom and um, building, essentially, something like this. So this is a Porsche 914 high-voltage loom. Um, but I think it would probably be better if I show you these two boards over here because they've actually got the cables on. This is a Fiat 500. So this is the high-voltage cable loom for the Fiat 500 conversion and the low-voltage um, loom for the Fiat 500 uh, builds. So this is uh, essentially in kit form the wiring system for a Fiat 500 conversion and that's why we take you know, the vehicle, uh, the cables out once we've converted a car just to put them on a board and if you zoom in you'll see you know you literally go real, real detail get the cable lengths right you even get the angle of the um, crimps in the right position um, you know, get all the um, uh, connectors all um, uh, wired up, and you know, it's a it's a real good way of being able to do uh, make up a kit without a car here. So the next Porsche 914 that comes in, we'll already have everything pre-wired and pre-built um, before it arrives, so that then we can do the conversion really quickly, or send these kits out to other conversion shops around the world, which is something we're doing a lot of now as well. So there you go. That's why we. Um, uh, do a conversion on a number of vehicles, take it all back out again and put it back in. But uh, once you've done that once, it's worth the investment. And actually, on that front, I'll show you something else that's quite interesting. Because underneath there, there's not much to see. Uh, in fact, let me just double check. <laughs> yep, I'll tell you what, if I lift it up, <coughs> you'll see. Oh, if I turn it on, it'll help. That'll be enough. There you go. So if you stick your head underneath here, this essentially uh, is where the engine and gearbox used to sit. And uh, that was always the Achilles seal in the rallying, wasn't it? Never enough power. No, we never had enough power or, or enough talent. <laughs> what? <laughs> um, so what we've uh, got, and I'll show you in a minute now, is we've got the battery pack kind of sitting here and we've got the motor sitting here, and it's a Tesla small drive unit, um, which uh, you know, uh, gives around about 250, 300 horsepower, so, which is enough in a Porsche 914. Uh, so what we've done is we've got a cradle, which picks up off the original uh, gearbox mounts here, and the original engine mounts here, and that cradle then holds the battery pack and the motor, and it's around about the same weight as the engine and gearbox and exhaust and everything anyway, uh, so these mounts will take it and then the idea is you bolt it all up one two three four five six six bolts and everything just bolts up and then all the um, uh, high voltage and low voltage uh, cables will have their crimps already on and you just plug it all in and i'll show you <coughs> the fabrication side over <coughs> here now all the battery boxes and um, mounts have gone to be powder coated so i can't show you them but what I can show you is the end result of um, the jigs, if you like, that we um, design um, uh, to have the repeatability of these things. So, so this here, for instance, this is a spare cradle that we've uh, designed up. Um, so this is a Porsche 914 cradle. And essentially, if I put it down like that, it'll be a bit clearer. So I was sitting in it, facing the camera that way. And essentially, this is where I'm sitting here would be where the battery box would sit. And then underneath here on these mounts here is where the motor would sit. And, you know, uh, as I've already mentioned, you, you, you put everything on and then like uh, either raise it up or lower the car down and you bolt everything on. And, you know, to build one of these, you need to have what's called a jig. So what we've got over here is a jig. 
So this is a representation of a Porsche 914 um, with all the mounts in the right place. And the guys can then use this in future to be able to build another one of those cradles without the car being here. And we have these for various different cars from Porsche 914s to 911s to Fiat 500s to Minis. Uh, there's a Mini one over there. So it helps us to be able to supply conversion kits to companies and get our own conversions done or battery boxes and looms done before the cars arrive, which will speed up the conversion process in the future and you know, not only make it time efficient, but also a bit more cost efficient as well. So, right, on with the uh, show. Let's go to the next car. What's the next car? Fiat 500. Right. I think the last uh, time the Fiat 500s uh, were um, half converted, and again, typical um, uh, thing. You know, this was literally all built up the other day, and they've taken it apart just to check things. Um, I think a good solid day on this, and this will be uh, finished now. So in this, uh, same with the other Fiat 500 that's around somewhere, the motor's in. So this is a motor onto the original gearbox. And as you can see, everything bolts in again. So essentially you've got a, uh, a motor cradle around there and it bolts into the existing uh, bolts that are holding the rear balance and stuff on. Uh, and then the battery boxes, um, well, actually, before I mention that, so that's the motor and everything in. And then you've got two plates that go on there, which are sitting here. So if I grab one there, and there's another one on the table over there. If you imagine these sitting in kind of there and the other one then that side and then on that and obviously these are uh, fairly thick alley and on top of that there you see all these holes here you've got things like the battery boxes will sit on there the motor controllers you've got the high voltage junction box and bits and pieces which are over here so you've got uh battery boxes so we've got two Fiat 500s getting converted at the same time so these are the battery boxes so that's the rear one so that would sit on top of that plate that's the front one rear one front one and these are all done finished high voltage um, is already on there um, actually that's the isolator so that's essentially goes on there that's your uh, service disconnect or safety disconnect um, but you've also got the high voltage plugs and the low voltage uh, plugs in various different places as well Right, so that's the battery boxes for the Fiat 500s, but we need to crack on. So that's the Fiats, and now we'll go over to another Fiat, the <laughs> Fiat Testarossa, I mean Ferrari Testarossa. <laughs> so Ferrari Testarossa, we've got two of those in the workshop at the moment, and um, this one has all the dirty, smelly stuff taken out, and there's a cavernous hole in here, but anyone that wants to follow this in a bit more detail, we're doing a conversion um, like series on the Ferrari uh, Testarossas. So I won't um, uh, dwell on the, this one because essentially, if you want to follow this build, have a look on the uh, Ferrari uh, Testarossa conversion series that we're doing on these. So that's the Testarossa, I'll leave that one. We've got a, a lovely VW camper in. So this is a conversion from around about, oh, five years ago, I think it is. Um, not seen it for a while. Uh, and unfortunately the encoder, which is on the end of the motor, has failed on it. So um, that's out at the moment over there, and we were just waiting on a new encoder to come. Um, and at the same time, we're just uh, giving it a bit of TLC and some upgrades of things like the suspension bushes while it's here and anything else that might need to be um, uh, looked at because it's an old vehicle at the end of the day. So this is a, uh, a well-used uh, family camper um, called Matilda, I think it's called. I think that's what they call it. Um, so yeah, lo lovely car, uh, lovely uh, guys, um, uh, Alistair that owns it. And uh, yeah, just uh, back for a few days uh, for a bit of TLC. There's the other Ferrari Testarossa. Here's my bus. So my daily driven bus, talking about conversions I did some time back. This I did, whoa, must be six, maybe seven years ago now, and I, restored this and converted it on the budget back then um, and I just felt that it needed a little bit of uh, TLC because it's literally just not been looked after well not looked after it's just you know there's nothing that ever goes wrong with it so you just get in it drive it and like you know use it but I just feel uh, it's time to give it a bit of love so um, I'm going to give it a bit of restoration 
Uh, but at the same time, the technology I used six or seven years ago is not the same technology that I use now. So what we're doing as well is upgrading some of the technology that's in the bus as well. Uh, you know, the, the charges in it were like 2.5 kilowatt charges, and I had two making five kilowatts. Well, now, you know, seven kilowatts is the minimum, and we've got 21 kilowatt AC or CCS charging at 150 kilowatts as well. So, you know, we're upgrading all that at the same time. So that's my bus. That's why this is here. And the other Fiat 500 is over there, so I won't cover that because I've covered it already with the uh, uh, cream one that's over there. Oh, that's at the same state. Nice colour, that, isn't it? Yeah, I like that colour. Uh, what have we got over here? So there's the uh, Mercedes 190 SL. We're just about to um, start diving into that. And I'll quickly show you something uh, that arrived today, which I, I got quite excited about because I'm a bit sad, is this. Look at that. Motor eye candy. Mmm, nice. So that is the motor that is going in the uh, Mercedes 190 SL and, and the gearbox uh, gear reduction unit and everything as well. So that's going to be direct drive with a motor we've never used before. I uh, can't remember the specs of it, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, really excited about that because I love getting my teeth into new technology. So new motor, uh, new gearbox. And then we've got some lovely VW Beetles. So we've got an oval over here, which is beautiful, beautiful uh, oval. Um, Left-hand drive. Um, can't remember the color of this. Somebody out there remind me uh, the VW color of this, uh, but fantastic uh, uh, color. Um, now, the reason why we've got the oval in um, and obviously the Baja, uh, which is, you know, pretty, you know, pretty much done um, is because we want to double check that um, the, the bolting kit that we use in a 1970s Beetle will still work in uh, an older, much older oval Beetle. I already know that the fuel tank space won't work because essentially, you know, I know my VWs quite well and I already know that's different. So we'll have to design that a little bit differently. Um, but the way the, if you come around here, the way we do our beetle conversions now uh, is like this. So essentially what you've got is you've got a, a Tesla small drive unit in, in there. So that's essentially a Tesla small drive unit. And then you've got a cradle. And this cradle bolts to the um, frame horns and also the gearbox mount as well. And the, usually on a beetle as well, it'll bolt into where the bumper irons go. But on a Baja, there's nothing there. It's gone, it's been cut off. Um, but if you imagine these are normally down lower down here. Um, so that's what we normally do for a beetle conversion. And obviously on the uh, oval, you'll see it a bit more clearly. What we've got to check out, if I come around here, you, you can slide in there, Tim. What we've got to check <coughs> out essentially is that it, that cradle will still mount to the same places here and here on the frame uh, horns and on the gearbox mount down there and then the same place underneath here and underneath there for the bumper irons. Um, as with a lot of classic cars, there's different design changes over the years, but I just love this Baja. It's just so cool. Um, it's not quite running yet, but it's close. Uh, so we've got, as I say, the Tesla uh, drive unit is in. Uh, the battery pack's in the rear, so you can see through the window there. Um, We've got, uh, I think this is something like a 35 kilowatt hour battery pack. Um, you can put more batteries into a Beetle, but the main problem you've got to um, uh, pay attention to is weight. So even though you can go with bigger battery pack and more range, you'll be severely impacting on the weight of the car. So we always like to maintain the, uh, a similar weight distribution, not similar weight distribution, but a similar overall weight to when it was petrol. So you've got a battery pack in there, you've got another one in the front, but uh, just look at it. I mean, as an off-road vehicle, I mean, I like my Land Rovers. Don't get me wrong, four-wheel drive. But for a bit of fun, you can't beat this for an off-road car. It looks you? like it should be remote control, shouldn't it? Like those yeah. Tamiya things. Yeah, there's the Tamiya, um, uh, is it not the Scorcher? What was the name of the Tamiya? Comments below, remind yeah, what me. Was what, the Tamiya buggy buggy what was the Tamiya buggy called? What was the Tamiya remote control car that looked like this? And then we've got a little boot in there as well, which I think is really cool. But I mean, yeah, what, 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 what vehicle do you think would be off-road capable like this 
but as much fun as this. Comments below, I want to know what electric conversion um, or even a, a, you know, a, a any old um, off-road vehicle that we can convert to electric, let's say, that would be more fun off-road than this. Okay, there's more capable ones out there, four-wheel drive, yada, 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 but come on. You know, a raised up Baja Beetle with like the back chopped off, big BFG tires and, and the front chopped off for the uh, entry angle and everything sort of. I mean, it's just got fun written all over it, isn't it? Can you imagine this on the sand dunes? Oh, I can't wait to, uh, we need to test that. We're going to have to do a, um, a video on this one, aren't we? Definitely. I won't be happy until it pulls a wheelie. Down to the beach somewhere. Yeah. Cool, so there you go. Let me know what you think would be a, a more fun electric converted off-roader than this. So there you go. Uh, uh, there's the Alfa Romeo there, which is finished as well, but I think I've covered that on uh, one of our late... Oh, no! <gasps> I we get the Alfa, we've just... We, there's a recent um, road test on that. Well done, If anybody Jim, wants yeah. to see yeah, it. A bit of a plug there for one of our videos. If you want to see this in more detail, have a look at the, uh, at the link up here. I don't know where I'll put which, it yet. Which might not appear. Yeah. <laughs> uh, right. I just can't believe I even forgot about this one. What about this? Oh. Aston Martin. <laughs> Never thought we'd get an Aston Martin in. So here we go. This has just arrived the other day. It's an Aston Martin V8. And not, I, not anymore, it's not. No, it's not anymore. You're right. And, and I must admit, this is one of my favorite Aston Martins. I know there's people out there, oh, what about the DB5 and all that? But this is my favorite. I don't know why. It's of, of my era. Do you remember the Persuaders? No. Timothy Dalton in James Bond was in it. I yeah, there was a program called The Persuaders with Roger Moore and um, mm. Tony See, I'm Curtis. Not old, I'm not as old as we <laughs> He had one of those. Was it in black and white? Did no, it, was it on one of those wind-up TVs that you used to watch? <laughs> was that what it was? So here we go, Aston Martin uh, V8. I'm not sure what, what we're going to call this now. We can't call it an Aston Martin V8. An E8. I don't know. Comments below. What are we going to call this car? Um, e EV8. Not ruined before you start typing ruined. EV8. EV8. Yeah, yeah, there you go. EV8. Well done, mate. Any, any better suggestions than uh, Aston Martin EV8? So ignore the uh, wheels on it. These are just rollers to get it uh, rolling around. Um, and some of the work has already been done. So the restoration uh, has been done by the guys down at Cotswold Classics. Fantastic work that they do. And the Tesla Model 3 motor is already in the back. So Tesla Model 3 motor in the back. And then we've got a do the rest, which sounds so easy. <laughs> It'll be done next week. So there you go, Aston Martin EV8. Um, can't wait to get this on the, uh, on the road as well. This will be a beast. But um, what, what other uh, film cars do you think we should do? This was, this was in uh, James Bond, what one was it in? Can you I think it was in quite a few. It was in a couple of James Bonds, no, wasn't it? I think it? it was just in one James Bond, Timothy Dalton one. No, it was in the George Lazenby one. Oh, was it? Oh, there you yeah. go. Um, so, yeah, what other TV cars do you think would make a cool conversion? Don't forget, we've already done the DeLorean. So, yeah, comments below. What other film stroke TV cars do you think would make ex excellent electric conversions? I think that's it. We've run out of cars. Don't know how many that was. Too many, as usual. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed that video of our workshop walk around and uh, next time you'll see the workshop walk around there will be load more different cars in and some will be finished and hopefully we would have filmed some of the cars that we've uh, finished in uh, certain episodes that we do as well so hope you enjoyed that video and i'll see you next time